All right, welcome to my uh, Christie tutorial breakdown. And today I'm going to be just going over the generally the. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm going to be going over the main aspects of Christie that you have to end up that are helpful for knowing about her if you're trying to like take up the character or just kind of like learn how she operates. All right, I'll just go over. Um, I'll just go over a bit of a kind of rundown here. It's almost like kind of like a like bu bullet notes on just on just some like attributes of her. All right, for Christy, she is a rushdown character that excels at close quarters combat, also called uh, CQC and evasion. Thanks to her strike speed, powerful long manipulative strings, and her um, Infamous high crushing command size that Jukyle she is able to she is able to maintain to maintain the upper hand with regards to close quarter combat or if she plays on the defensive with her um, evasion. Right, uh, her general striking speed is is quite fast with a uh, an I nine jab. An I-11 uh, 6P mid-punch, uh, an I-14 uh, low punch, an I-13 an I-13 high kick, um, and she has numerous quick uh, mid-kicks. Her 12, her 12 frame uh, mid-kick, her 7K, it is, it, is, uh, uns it is unsafe on block. Uh, It is unsafe on block at minus 25, however, because of pushback, the opponent will not be able to throw punish it unless they're really on point with like a dash up 60. But generally, what um, what opponents will have to do is they'll have to find some move that can reach far enough to punish it. So to get yourself out of tight spots, uh, Christy 7k can be uh, quite useful. Her other um, fast mid kicks is her... Uh, her 6k. It's her 6k, which is also grants her a uh, plus, plus 18 frame advantage, which is good uh, for starting the stun game in close. And she also has two 14 frame mid kicks. H plus K which is a track in mid that is a stun, can stun also, can stun on a normal hit. So it can also be a way for starting the, the stun game. It reaches at actually a pretty decent uh, range of 1.8 meters. It doesn't look like it reaches that far, but it, it actually does. I mean, um, n not to mention being, um, as you can see with the move details box, it's a... Um, a tracking move, so a 14 frame mid tracking move is um, very useful. Her other 14 frame mid kick is her is her 4K. On normal hit, it doesn't necessarily do much, but on a uh, on counter hit, it grants a very very strong lift stun. I mean, it, it grants you plus 40 frame advantage. If you do, if you do it on, if you connect it on counter hit or during stun, which, well, a plus, a plus, a plus forty uh, lift stun can be allows you pretty much to, to even connect moves that are like over thirty frames. Albeit, you, you do have to be a bit careful that yes, the potential follow ups can be, can be stagger escaped. So, so that is that is one thing to take into account. But fortunately, most people don't usually. Most people generally don't usually stagger escape on fastest. So, under most uh, circumstances, you'll you'll usually be able to connect it anyway. So, this shows that uh, lift stuns are well. Not only are they quite powerful for um, Christie, but they're quite 
powerful in a Dead or Alive 5, including Dead or Alive 5 last round in general. Alright, um, other fast strikes that she have and also notable ones would be her um, full crouch, 3P, which similar to her uh, H plus K is a... Um, it's a quick mid hidden tracking move. This one is uh, 15 frames and has the ability to um, go under high. So it's a 15 frame high crush which, with the ability to, to launch on counter hit. So, even, so you can get a small juggle on level 1. So with this one though, can be useful for any time you suspect the opponent might sidestep even in like like round 1 fight. So its range is a little short at only a ra between 1.12 1.13 meters. So it actually has it has less range than her jab, but generally you're going to be like using this in close. It also happens to be her uh, her mid her mid punch launcher from neutral. So don't be surprised if you occasionally might see some Christie players using this at round one fight to try and uh, sneak, get in a sneaky launch. Going back to the other um, track and move, um, H plus K, it also does have um, it also does have uh, follow ups and can can act as a launcher itself. Uh, well, if it's used to exceed the, the threshold. So what you can do with it, uh, I got the I think I got the opponent on stagger seat. Then from there you can end up doing different kind of juggles. Like right there is just something I just tossed together, but you get the idea that you can you can use this move as a launcher. Alright, right there I also I use the, that's the one I usually go for is 4k, but some people do opt for um, H plus K. Uh, I can't really get it to work here. So yeah, right there you kind of get the, you get the idea that um, H plus K can be used as a relauncher. The one I usually like going for is uh, 4k because it's, um, it's more sudden and allows for it allows for generally more um, convenient juggles, in my opinion. But yeah, both of Christie's uh, 14 frame mid kicks are um, are really good. Um, as for as for lows, this is actually a uh, well, despite the amount of mix up potential that Christie has, her um, her lows actually aren't really that strong, especially on um, normal hit. Uh, for her lows, like she, um, unlike most characters, she lacks a 2P that is gener that is either zero on um, normal, that is like zero on normal hit, or um, or minus one or plus one. Where hers is plus five. The thing that makes her uh, her 2P, the thing that makes her 2P uh, unique, is that it has um, string follow-ups that are quite delayable. It only has two follow-ups, just a. Uh, 2p, uh, 2ppp, but a fine with enough delay, it can generally um, catch people off guard. However, take note that the take note that the second hit is a high. So even if you get hit by 2p on normal hit, you can generally just 2p right back if the Christie player or use a fast high crush if the Christie player likes to opt for 2pp. So one thing you do want to be careful of it. Like, well, when you're playing Christie's to not abuse 2P too much unless the opponent doesn't properly know how to deal with it. But the big note here is that the second hit is a high and you can't hence 5 on normal hit. So, so you can't really use it as a pressure tool like a lot of other characters 2Ps which are generally 0 or 
plus one on hit. Alright, in terms of just the... Uh, well, generally the... The low, the low pokes that you'll, the low poke that you'll generally go with with Christy the most will be her two H plus K or down H plus K. This poke here is negative on, um, it is negative on normal hit, but it does have a, a follow up which is causes a light stun on normal hit. Although, um, generally I find when most people are get hit or block the first hit, they're generally looking out for the the second hit. So what you can do is try and familiarize yourself, like get used to the get used to the delay on this move. Because with with that you can start to use it almost like a mix-up tool. Because the opponent has to look out for the or they they have to respect the potential fall up or they'll get hit by a or they'll get counter hit stunned by it. So from here you could start to start to mix up the opponent and because by doing this they either have to worry about the follow up or they don't take or they just like forget about it or don't take note of it then you can start to cope with others. So I mean that's also a, a big thing with uh that's also a big thing with Christy is um is just basically a lot of her strikes might be like on um a lot of her a lot of her strikes might be negative on normal hit, but she has a lot of um, st string, well, string manipulation, string delay. So, so uh, with with that in mind, instead of necessarily worrying about positive or minus, just kind of worry about like how you manipulate the the different strings and stuff like that. Oh, and um. And another um, useful low, which I actually do tend to make quite a bit of a uh, use of, is her uh, 1P or 1PK. With this low, it can act as a, um, an instant high crush. So anytime you suspect the opponent will go for some sort of uh, some sort of high or any high like within a string, as soon as you uh, anticipate the high, you can immediately go for this. Whereas the on counter hit, the second hit can uh, grant you a juggle. So if you... Like, this is just a small juggle, but... You kind of get the idea, so... If the opponent does come at you with a high... Then just use this... Immediately and just like, go under. Um... Alright, so... I'll just continue now with a bit of the overview. I'll also uh, go over a bit of the o overview of um, Christy. All right. Based, generally, I'd say that she's um, very well-rounded. She's actually arguably the she's arguably one of the most well-rounded characters in the game. The only categories where she seems to kind of um, struggle the most, I think, would be with reference to her throws and her um her holds particularly her holds i mean with having weak throws and holds what this tends to translate to is um is considerably weaker like overall punishment compared to other characters especially in terms of um block punishment because in uh dead or Life 5 last round the general form of punishment is usually with uh, the general form of punishment is with the throw such as like a uh, the most common one for most characters is their 7th frame throw, which is usually which is usually their 6T. I mean, for something that's a bit more negative, like about minus 11 or minus 12 on block, you can opt for a 10 frame throw. Even though, for me, I usually tend to give myself about an extra like 2 frame window, just to make sure you're not necessarily too late. So for, um, I generally don't start to punish minus I usually don't start to punish with a 10 frame throw until about minus 12. Because in Dead or Life 5 last round, you need to add one more frame to the negative in order to punish it. So what that means is that generally for to use a, a 7 frame throw, you won't be able to start um, getting a guaranteed punish with it until about minus 8. But with um, 
with Christy, you don't really get that much reward for it. She just has a, a 45 damage throw that switches sides and does have the ability to get uh, floor damage, but no other environmental damage other way. As for her, um, as for her holds, they all tend to just do fairly. They tend to do like fairly average damage. Just her, um, just her low punch hold ends up doing like the. Just her low punch hold, you see, launches the opponent up and can uh, can set up potential can set up potential juggles here for over 60 damage. Or you can you can try and attempt to set up a a reset also. Although you do you sacrifice a bit of damage to do that, but it does give you the it does give you the floor the floor splat um, status, which or the the um, the ground splash status, which can allow you to um, get up uh, to to gain to um, get a follow up with um, two two H plus K P if the if the opponent doesn't um, tech back. Uh, it's well in the in the training mode, the opponent tends to do a, like a, what's a delayed tech right away, so you won't be able to. Um, it's, it's a bit... you won't be able to demonstrate it, um... So what it is, you kind of go for it again, but uh, if the opponent does tech, it'll avoid, but... A thing I do, if uh, the opponent... If I suspect the opponent may tech... Is sometimes I just go for the... Just 2H plus K. Because even when the... Um, even when you knock the opponent over, or I mean you um, you like you ground them or something, you could still, with the recovery of this, you can still end up reacting to to wake up kicks. And if they lie on the ground, you can you can delay the P and just wake wake them up with that. All right, another um, another aspect of a. Uh, Chrissy that you generally want to take note of is her uh, is her uh, guard break game. However, I will, I'll get back. I'll get on to that uh, a little later. Right now, I'll, I'll go over just. Um, I'll start from the the top a bit now. All right. When you're um, learning Christy, the, the first thing I, I say, which is uh, most recommended, is to go into the. It's just go into the command training and familiarize yourself with her um, with her strings, because because she does have quite she does have quite a bit that you have to um, take note of. I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of P's here, but um, but as as you're going through it, the main thing to take note of are her uh, basically like Jakayo transitions. Like new, a lot of her moves have the ability to transition into Jakayo. What uh, Jakayo is is Christie's circumand sidestep. It's a core part of her of her gameplay. So as a result, she has numerous ways to transition into it. So she has there she has two kinds, ones that can be done with um with it with like eight P plus K, such as like six P P can transition to it, and uh, the other kinds are are ones that would require you to cancel a charge. Such a four P P P. Uh, six, 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 uh, PPP, and uh, the last one is uh, trickiest. Is it's back turn two PPP. Even though for me, I tend to opt for mostly the ones with with P plus K because it's the uh, I find it's a bit more reliable and doesn't require you to have to charge it up. Like three, three P, the uh, three P string has two kinds. 
you can do it either by charging or or just by doing um, 2p 2p plus k or or 8p plus k all right so once you do kind of Once you do kind of just get used to her her strings, then you can once you, you once you say you feel comfortable, especially with the transitions, th then you can uh, just try try her out in um, free training. Alright, for um, the, the kind of move that I tend to, the move that I do tend to recommend the most with um, with Christy is getting familiar with her P-strings. Alright, if you're just trying to get familiar with strings, I do recommend turning on the the move list on the side because it lets you see all the different strings here. To me, I think Christie's most potent string is her um, P strings, also called um, by P. With here, there are numerous different transitions that you can do off it. She has the ability to eventually hit like every every hit level with it. I mean, to complement the, the, the numerous different uh, variations you can have on her P string is her very potent um, string delays and string manipulation. I mean, you can even combine Jakayo, Jakayo transitions with... You can even uh, combine Jakayo transitions with the uh, the different with the different um, manipulations off PP. I mean, as you can tell, just looking through the move list here on the side, there's quite a lot of um, different variations that you can have. I mean, a, a good st uh, opening move that uh, a fair bit of Christie players like to use is PKK into the Jukaiyo transition. It's it's pretty much the same as like just doing um, KK, except for by doing by doing a uh, PKK, you end up getting the benefit of um, opening up with a nine frame jab as opposed to a thirteen frame high kick. I mean, with a nine frame jab being the fastest jab in the game. You essentially do not have to worry about getting beaten out by other jabs, uh, un except under like very unique situations. Like generally, the only way how you tend to get beaten out by a jab is if someone's gonna high crush you, or if they make a read on you and end up um, holding the and holding the high jab. Now, once you've gotten used to the, all the different kind of um, variations of her, of the P string, the next string I tend to um, recommend is her. Is her 6pp string. This one doesn't have as much variation as her, as her p strings, but it does complement it, it. Well, it's a her 6p is a very powerful strike in its own right, and it does have technically three follow-ups. They are all they are all mid punches. However, you do have the ability to transition to Jakayo after after the second punch. Although against an opponent's against an opponent's uh, block, you do want to be like a bit careful with that. Uh, I'm supposed to set this up right. See, right now, um, Ioni here is using a 15 frame mid punch, and it's it's basically will can pretty much stuff anything you could do from 
Jake Jakayo on block. Uh, shows better with here, but you kind of um, get the idea. The common retaliation for uh, Christy, who does like um, who does a strike into a Jakayo transition on block, is just simply six P them. Like, because if you just do a six P, if you just do a six P like right away as they go into uh, Jakayo, it will just stuff anything they do. They will just stuff anything they do out of it. So. I mean, if, if the opponent isn't able to respond to it, then you can you can you can end up having like a field day with Jakayo, But but the general response is, for the matchup is to is to strike it right away because basically you have to tell the Christie player that they can't Jakayo for they can't Jakayo for free on block. But if you do end up getting have be able to get the opponent to stay, if you are able to keep the opponent locked up. You do have quite a, a bit of numerous options from um, from Jakayo. Alright, she actually actually has a, a lot more options from J Jakayo than just from than just from like a normal sidestep. Like, like with Christy Element, I don't use the normal sidestep that option and that often. I mean, the two options from there are pretty good, but it's just you get a lot of um, uh, mix-up potential from Jakayo. Alright, I can even um, sh show you the different options right here. Alright, the most common one is just Jakayo P, which is... Um, I'll show you the details. Alright, Jakayo P is just... Um, is her just her mid punch? Is her one of her mid punch options, which is able to launch on counter hit and has a uh, different follow ups. All right, so from there you can do um, PP. From here you can do. Um, she also has PKP and. Uh, Jakayo PK 2P, which is uh, the common one you use if the opponent's standing there due to a lot of delayability, a lot of uh, delayability within the string. And also take note that you can use any part of the string to free cancel. Alright. Other options from there is um, she has a low kick Jakayo 1K, which can also be inputted as J Jakayo 2K. All right, this strike is technically unsafe on block, and um, it's also negative on negative on normal hit. However, it has three potential follow-ups. Um, the first one, which is generally a common one, is Jakayo uh, 1K 2K. Although it is quite unsafe on block, but it does have a bit of delayability. The next one is um, Jakayo 1K 6K, which is also um, unsafe on block, but not as unsafe as a 1K as a 1k, 2k. Uh, let me just try and move out of the corner. And uh, last option is uh, Jakayo uh, 1k, k. This one has has the does have the most has a lot more delayability than uh, than 1k, uh, 6k, which pretty much cannot be uh, which cannot be a uh, delayed at all. So if you try and delay it, you'll end up getting 1, 1k k. It is, I mean, what, the only option that is safe on block is uh, her 1k k, the high kick. However, in my experience, I find that if the opponent blocks the first hit, I find that no one gets hit by the... no one, no one gets hit by the second hit. Because it's it, it is quite reactable. 
So generally what I tend to use would be a, a mix up between Jakayo 2kk or Jakayo 1k 6k. Although the safest option of course is to just simply just do a single strike. Because the the opponent always has to take note of of potential follow-ups. All right, and um, other other options from um, there are the other options from um, from Jikaiyo can also include um, well, this one here is a is a guard break. This one grants your um. Plus four. Uh, so this that is that is your um uh, that is your uh, your guard break option from from Jakayo. At plus like plus four plus four with Christy is quite uh, plus four from Christy is quite useful though because I mean with uh, Christy's speed. What well what that would end up doing is it would end up making her a nine frame jab five frames, her um, ele eleven frame six p would become seven frames, and her two p would end up becoming um ten frames even though, so yeah you you do get complete control over that even though it is, I mean obviously it's a it's a slower option but if if you're looking out for all the potential options from Jakayo I mean you may not be able to react to it in time. Alright, um, other options from Jakayo, because there, there are a fair bit, would be um, Jakayo 6P P plus K. This one here I do use to use uh, a fair bit, either for 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 wall splat and for like wall splat in the opponent. Since I, I do tend to, I do tend to like this, this option, because even if the even if the uh, opponent blocks it, you are safe on block. And I find that it, the, the opponent has to... The, the, well, the opponent needs to resist the urge to try and throw it, even though yeah, you, if you if you know the, the properties of move, you won't be trying to throw it. So you can use it as a bit of a, a frame trap. Uh, the, the, main, the main benefit of this move is, is simply just to simply knock the opponent across the room to knock him off an edge like off a cliff or like I or my main option is to knock him off a wall even if I use it um, the main reason why I may use it in open space is to try and get an opponent backed into a corner because I do find with Christy and you'll I will go over it a bit later that getting back in your opponent into a corner with Christy it can, is a becomes a very very advantageous situation for her. Like it's advantageous for most characters, but for Christy it does become it does become very very potent. Um, similar to six P plus K is Jakayo six uh, P P. In last round, um, an attribute they did give to this move is that it can wall slam. Uh, it, I mean, it's uh, the Jakayo six piece the same as the the third hit of her um, six P P P string, whereas the the second hit's like the fourth hit. So you can use that as a um, you can you you can use it as a a wall slam option. While well, when the opponent is stunned, um, the difference between doing um, Jakayo 6P and Jakayo um, uh, 6P plus K is that this uh, Jakayo 6P is slightly faster. I mean, it's just faster by a, f a few frames. But although those those few frames, those uh, three or four, it's a, approximately supposed to be four frames, but it does differ based on how much you uh, you delay it. But um, the 
I mean, under I find most um, situations I tend to use to try out 6P would be like at, at the end of a... Um, uh, would be like at the end of a juggle. And I can uh, just uh, show you right here. Like this, so because with this I find it connects a little more um, consistently. Alright. Right, I find a lot a lot of times in order for um 6P plus K to connect you have to um, have a bit of a higher launch. Although uh, 6P plus K does do does do more damage. Like it does um 20 more damage where within um within a juggle if you take into account uh damage scaling. Like, you, you'll see the little number there on the move details. Where if you, like, hit someone during stun, it'll be 50%. So, with, if you're using it as, like, a wall slam, then the damage difference should be about... The damage difference should be about, um, 10 damage. I mean, during stun. So, yes, you get a bit more damage with 6P plus K. I mean, with, with, uh, yeah, 6P plus K, but with, um, Jakayo's 6P... Uh, when it does, when it does wall slam, you get a bit more um, consistency, and it is uh, it is more reliable in it is more reliable in, in juggles. Um, oh wow, I still haven't gone over all the <laughs> Jakayo options yet. Um, another one which I, I don't use as much, but it, it's similar to uh, 6P plus K is Jakayo H plus K. Uh, with with this option, I guess during stun, so the opponent doesn't only hold mid punch. You could knock him back also with um Jakayo H plus K, which is a track and high kick. It does have um. It it, it does ha have a uh, wall slam capability. So in case, because obviously with um six P plus K and Jakayo um six P, they're both mid punches. So when a Christy goes into Kyle, you're gonna generally what you're gonna you're gonna end up doing is just uh, prioritizing mid punch hold because um four of her four of her options uh, four of her options are um, mid punches out of there. I mean two of them are high, like um aside from Jakayo, H plus K is a high. You also have Jakayo P plus K, which is also a uh, Christie's, um, which is Christie's second highest launcher after her, uh, well, after just her rolling K. So usually, what I do, especially if the opponent uh, is stunned, I usually tend to prioritize. Uh, well, if I just want to launch them. You're gonna get a during stun. You'll get a 50-50 between. Uh, well, this on counter hit. Let's see. You'll get a 50-50 between um these two. Technically, uh, Jakayo P plus Jakayo P plus K is a more higher launch, so it's more dangerous. However, Jakayo P has um has fall ups. So if, if the opponent is if the opponent is blocking, then you can then you can use you can basically kind of use Jakayo 6P as or Jakayo P as like a frame trap. Because on block you need Jakayo um, uh, Jakayo P K, and and if they're still blocking, you can go for a. PK than 2P, which is um, very delayable. I mean, right there. I mean, yes, if the opponent does block either string, you will be unsafe and open to, to throw punishment. Uh, I... Just trying to make sure I haven't missed any on Jakayo Oh, I missed um, just one. 
Right here, yeah. She does. She also does have a, a mid kick option from here. This is a uh, Jakai OK. If you use it during stun or, I mean, it's see, it, it's basically very similar to the second hit of a uh, of one K six K. But if you do it during um, if you do it during stun, then you can either get a. Um, a gut stun or or, um, or a limbo stun. What determines what determines whether you get a limbo stun or a crumple stun is based by this attribute, which is um, fairly unique to Dead or Alive Five, but is also in Virtual Fighter. It's called um, open stance and um, close stance. Right now, Ayane and Christy are are in what's called close stance. What close stance is, is when both characters have their lead foot pointing towards the opposite side. For instance, right now, Christie's um, lead foot is uh, pointing towards Ayane's um, back leg, and Ayane's lead foot is leaning towards Christie's back leg. If you end up, um, if you end up hit it, connecting a move that would normally that causes either a crumple or limbo stun in uh, close stance. It will cause the gut stun. Uh, right. Well, right now they're standing in um, open stance, which is where both lead foot, both lead feet or foot feet are um, pointing at each other. And right now they're um, right now their back leg, their back leg is um, pointing at each other. But with the uh, yeah, there's also a little um, uh, quirk to know it with the uh, Jukaio is that if you are in close stance, when you go into when you when you when you when you go out into uh, Jukaio, it ends up actually switching the side. So if you are in if you if you are in close stance, occasionally you will get a a limbo stun. But the general rule of thumb is open stance. Open stance is for uh, limbo stuns, and closed stance is for gut stuns. If the opponent, if you do, uh, if you do happen to get a gut stun, the opponent can hold out of it, unfortunately. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm just look. Oh, here it is. I see right there, so the opponent can hold out of it. If you hit it on their back, they can't hold out of it, but you get a different. If you do manage to hit someone in with a Jukai OK in the back, then you'll get a different stun. The opponent can't hold out of it, but you're only at a small, you're only at a small advantage. Sorry about that. Just uh, responding here. Oh, shoot. <laughs> uh, sorry about the de the delay, but I, I, at the end I will be able I will answer um any any questions that you have. So I will um I will scroll through this at the end of the session. Uh, so going back to Jukai OK, alright, this is the only mid mid kick option out of here, however it is the most potent one. Alright, between getting either a gut stun or a limbo stun, naturally the stun you wanna get is the The stun you wanna get is a is a limbo stun. Because off of there you can end up getting um guaranteed follow-ups. Off of there, off of the, the the stun I usually try and get. I'll just turn off the hold for now. 
Off of a uh, limbo stun, you can get. If if you connect the. Uh, uh, let me see. Ah, uh, his opponent's not cooperating. Yeah, it's really it's really hard to line up open or close stance. If you do connect um six PP the string on a back turn opponent, you can actually get the entire string guaranteed. So it pretty much becomes guaranteed damage and can be used as as back punishes. I mean, with the limbo stun, with the the limbo stun, di different um options do become available. For the crumple stun, you have to use a move that is no no slower than um four than fourteen frames. Um, right here, so the slowest move that would connect would be something like her her two P if you get the gut stun. Um, uh, try it. Alright, a string that you can use during it is her PP2P string. Although, I mean, it sets the opponent up for a potential um, critical burst. Although, of course, parts of the string can be held. Alright, her, if you do get the, the gut stun, her 2K unfortunately won't connect on a when it's the front facing opponent since it's uh, a little slow at 15 frames. Uh, let's see if I can get a limbo stun here. But on a... Uh, if you get the limbo stun you do get a guaranteed um... a guaranteed 2k after. Uh, I gotta switch sides again. Ah, it's a little too slow. Yeah, that's probably one of the trickiest things to try and kind of compensate for in a match is the difference between open stance and uh, closed stance. Like sometimes you can go for a, a kind of a, almost like an option select, like whether you get either option. Oh, uh, now, I, now I get the limbo. Like here you can just, you can 6 PPP and set him up even though yes. Um, you do leave yourself open to be, you do leave yourself open to being potentially held, but six P is well, it's your most r reliable option. Like I, I'll admit that I actually don't really like gut stuns that much because you don't get much time to react, and the opponent can hold out of it. And also, it, for a, for a lot of gut stuns, the high attacks may not connect. On this on the Jakayo K, yet uh. Highs will connect, but on um, other on other um, gut stuns, they they may not. Or you have to you have to end up striking quickly. Uh, I want to show you something you can do off of the the limbo stun, but I I can't really seem to get the status. Uh, if you do get the Limbo Stun, the recommended options usually can be... Uh, the recommended options can be generally go for 2k, which is 2k where you, which which would end up being guaranteed. You can just take the damage and go for a uh, 6, 6p pp at the back. Or... You can also go for like various um, P strings. Although you might have to adjust your your distance a bit. The only worry if you do opt for the the P strings is that the different parts of the string technically can be can be held, so the opponent can hold out of it. Ah, uh, all right. So I'll just uh. Just uh, continue on there. I know, yeah, I spent uh, quite quite a bit of time on that. I spent quite a bit of time on that move, so. Yeah.
But yes, it is a, a good option. It's only... It's only about minus... It's only about minus 10 or, or in this case, minus 11 on block. It, I think it varies a bit based on a um, stance. So this option isn't isn't that unsafe. Although, yeah, if the opponent if is on point, they can um, just easily um, 6T or seven frame throw you. But I noticed it it does throw opponents off a little bit because she looks like she's in a she's in a, a squad in status. Or well, it says on the move details I'm crouching. Although you you can um, stand in you can um, stand and throw it. Uh, If you for Kyle on block, just as like a real recap, the the go-to can either be if they are just standing there blocking, you can go for the guard break. For um, in general, I usually just go for the Kyle P. If you end up um, if you end up stunning the, stunning the if you end up um, if you have deck the opponent in stun. Then I usually go for a 50-50 between um, uh, Jakai P plus K or Jakai P because both of those will launch. If, if you're if you're worried that the opponent might try to hold both of those, you can go you can go for a low. You can go for you can go for uh, Jakai K, which as you if you connect it on a counter hit, it will give you generally give you a good. Stun status. Like for instance, if you do 6k, then transition into a uh, Jukaiol K. I will have to excuse if my <laughs> if my uh, plane's a little less than optimal. I admit that. Yeah, trying to explain and um, play at the same time can sometimes uh, feel awkward. But I hope that is uh, just kind of um, furthers your uh, kind of understanding of her. All right. Um. I'll do a small, I'll do a, a small recap right now. All right, so when learning Christie, I mean the first thing, of course, is to go into, is to go into c command training, and just familiarize yourself with their strings. Once you just get, I mean, especially with their uh, different Jukai transitions, and uh, can cancels and different uh, different stances. Um, different timings, different like string delays. I mean, lots of different things to have to uh, check out. I mean, once you feel good about her after a uh, command training, you, then you can. The thing I ne next to is uh, recommend is getting used to her five P strings um, and her like six P strings. I mean, like, like I said earlier, six uh, P has um, has less kind of a string. Has less uh, string manipulation, as the I mean less string manipulation than the P strings. However, it does have 6P does have really really good reach for an I11 poke. All right, with the move details, what I did is I push in the right stick. Then you can scroll, and you have three different pages to check distances. You go to the second page. All right, for Christie's 6P, it can reach 1.76 meters, which is Encourages and pretty much the, the furthest, or at least one of the furthest you'll find for a for a six P. I mean, it reaches far enough that you can use it as a mid-range poke, and of course it it, it um gives a real a good it gives a nice stun on on counter hit. See whether you hit the first one. See, the first one can give you plus 10, but generally speaking, you can usually just do both at the same time. The thing is that if if um, 6PP actually connects on normal hit, if 6PP connects on a normal hit, the opponent actually cannot hold the, the second hit. However, to deal with this... Uh, 
to deal with this string, what you're supposed to do is be able to try and hold the second hit. Let's see if I can, if the AI will respond here. The window to hold it is pretty small though. The, the first strike comes out at 11 frames, but the second one comes out at uh, 13 frames. So yeah, you, you have to be quite on point with it. If you're dealing with an opponent that can hold it like on reaction, like they block the first hit and hold the second, You'll have to, uh, you, you won't be able to just go 6 PP all the time. Sometimes you might have to do a single one. Although... Although the, um, the, the, each part of 6 PP can be really our double digit negative on block. If you do manage to get to the last P, it is uh, minus, minus 11 on block. Alright, but um, yes, this is for, especially if people are, um, if people are fighting Christy, yeah, you have to be really accustomed to dealing with this string. So for 6 PP, if you can hold the second hit, then you can, what you end up doing is you end up taking away her Jukaio transition. However, if you block the second hit, then you, you have to watch out for a potential Jukaio transition and be ready to either low throw or 6P immediately. However, low throw, since uh, the way how you defeat Jukaio is by performing a low throw, inputted by just pressing a 2T or down T for most characters. Because if, it, although you have to be careful when going for a low throw, because if the Christy player does an a strike right away, your throw might get beaten out. And in um, and in DOA, if a strike beats out a throw, it will lead to high counter. It will lead to like high counter damage, which generally has devastate can have um, devastating uh, consequences. So. When you do go for a, when you do go for a throw, when you do go for, I mean, a throw punish, you have to, you have to be be careful that you're on point with it and are not too late, or you may get high counter blown, which is the the strongest um, hit status, the strongest hit status in this game. Um. Uh, oh, as a mix up with six PP Jakayo. Generally, another thing you could do is just simply do 6 PP, or uh, just do 3 punches, 6 PPP. But also, what you can practice is do 6 PP, then delay the third hit. So just try and get used to the different delays, because I find it can really keep the opponent on the defensive if you know how to work on um, Christie's delays. Alright, and uh, once you once you, once you are good with uh, the P strings and the uh, 6P strings, and the next things of course is the different um, different uh, Jakayo transitions, which I um, showed earlier. The Jakayo P and Jakayo uh, P plus K being the generally being the best options if you've stunned the opponent and um, and Jakai 4P or 1K being the options if the opponent is um, blocking. All right, after you are um, familiar with uh, with just Jakai in general, another thing to implement is her, what's uh, Jakai backdash. This is done by input in Jakayo, such as with 2P plus K or 8P plus K, and pressing 4 4. From here, you gain a new set of options. You can do a. Uh, you gain a uh, Jakayo, Jakayo P.
which is a which is a well, it's a bound back move. It causes the the bound back status. Or on block. On block, it should be a. It's a, it's a plus four guard break. So you can keep up pressure there. Generally, this will be the option that the, the opponent will be looking out for. However, you can also mix this up with a, a low kick. It is unsafe on block. Though, if you connect, the, if you do hit the opponent. Then you you'll end up going behind them. All right, the AI does the AI does tech up automatically, but so it does just simply if the opponent simply does lie on the ground, uh, then you can wake him up with a back turn uh, two P. Although it doesn't actually cause a formal force tech or a forced get up it just it is simply a ground hit but the, it does take away the it, it does take away the option for a wake up kick So as long as you hit there, I mean, yeah, it is a ground hit. However, if the opponent pushes a button while they're lying on the ground, if the opponent pushes a, a button while they're lying on the ground, then they will be um they will be forced up. I uh, don't know how to demonstrate that with the AI, but. Huh. Yeah, but generally speaking, as long as you take away the opponent's um, as long as you take away the opponent's wake up kick, they won't they won't be able to. Well, I mean that's one less threat that you have to you have to worry about. Although between the the different options you can do from a Jukaiyo back dash, the K option is probably the third or last uh, or least recommended option because the other options I do find are are a bit better. Like the probably the arguably the the best option for a Jukaiyo back dash would be a would be a Jukaiyo throw. Like this right here, I'll, I'll go over it maybe a or I'll go over throw game maybe a little a little later, but but just for the the throw the her um her stance throws are very potent. I mean I mean other than her. Other than her her, um, her 4T or Walt's uh, 660, this is her other like uh, her other um, potent throw. Uh, See from here, you you can end up trying to, well, because of the amount of pushback, you can't actually get a guaranteed uh, fall up. If you, you you can attempt to do a 66k after you can attempt to do a 66k after it. I mean, um, if the opponent holds right away, they still can, but the window to do so is small because you you are at a plus 21 um, a plus 21 sit down stun. So if you just want a relatively simple damage and to knock the opponent back into a corner, you can go for a 66k. Although once the opponent starts like trying to hold mid kick, like they'll they'll have to try and hold it right away. Uh, let me just take this off for now. If they like do try and hold it, then this is I find it usually better to just go for like reset, it's like situations. Just go for different attacks that can try and keep like momentum in your in your favor. I mean, like the main reason what also can make the throw 
useful out of this stance is because the well the well the opponent has to um, have to take into account all the options you can do out of uh, the Roland stance. Like I can show you the Roland stance options right now. There's a Roland PP, which is just uh, two mid punches. There's Roland K, which is a normal hit launcher, and is Christie's uh, also technically Christie's highest launcher, which can launch um, really high on a uh, high counter. So you can generally get a Christie's uh, most damaging open space juggles off of um, Roland K. But uh, going back just to the Jukaio um, backdash, the main options you will be using is Jukaio uh, 44P and Jukaio uh, 44 Jukaio 44 throw. Like if you just want to get in some sneaky damage, you could try um, Jukaio K. You could do that because it is a low and um, generally for the stance, the opponent's probably not going to be. Hold, uh, not going to be just uh, guarding low out of fear of getting hit. Fear of getting hit by like Jakayo four uh, four P, for instance. But her Jakayo um, her Jakayo uh, four four K is similar to her to her running two K, which I usually. I mean, this is a good if you like knock the opponent back. Say off of like a use. Uh, let me put it on here. If you knock the opponent back, say on Jakayo like six feet, then what you can do is you can chase after the opponent and hit them with a slide kick. Then it will wake you up and should and will should leave you at a considerable frame advantage. Then from there you can um, you can continue you can continue pressure right after you can continue pressure right after although you can uh did it yeah if you do it too early it will it will whip From there you can continue pressure like with uh throws or with um pokes um all right after you get used to, i mean it's only a few options i mean with uh you have punch a low kick or a mid punch, a low kick, a uh, uh, throw option, and um, the last option is is Jakayo four four three. For for this option, uh, you get you get access to the rolling options, the rolling TP. Rolling K, and the one I tend to get quite a bit of mileage of, out of is Rolling P plus K. This Rolling P plus K is my favorite option because it gives you a plus ten guard break that is um, hard to react to because you need to take into account the other potential options that you can do from that uh, position. So like what you can do is then you can get creative like with uh, her reset throw and just do another roll and it'll keep the opponent guessing. Then see because it's, it's the strongest 50-50 is between a roll in the strongest uh, mix up between a roll and throw and going for the mid kick. Uh, the roll has some uh, unique properties. Whereas Jakayo ha has the ability to high crush, which means it can go under and beat out highs, the roll has the ability to both crush highs and um, horizontal mids. 
Uh, I could probably show a uh, example right here. Sorry. Alright, Ione is using um, a tracking mid kick. But if you if you just if you do if she does the kick while you're doing the roll, uh, no, not from too close. You can go under it. I mean, yeah. So it, it can be a really strong option if you predict the opponent will use a uh, mid attack that it kind of goes across, as in it doesn't go upward or downward, or a mid that doesn't um, hit grounded. Like an example, like an example of a mid that have hit grounded would be like the third hit of Christie's H plus KK. If you, if you do time it, technically you can. Uh, oh wow! Although it's a bit trickier on this move, but if you time it, you can even get a launch with a rolling, a rolling. Rolling K. So right there, so it is an option, although I don't necessarily recommend rolling at the opponent too much from neutral, because they, well, you can technically beat it out with a low throw, and if they, they could probably try and beat it out with a, a fast, with a fast mid. But um, the time when actually the roll is probably most, in my opinion, the time when the roll is probably most potent would be like say during stun. Let's say let's say you get him up to like critical stun, then you can end up going for like a roll and mix up, because when you when you get the opponent to red critical stun, they're either going to be trying to st stagger escape or slow escape like mad. Or they're going to, or they're going to be trying to hold something. So if you like commonly like go for launches or something, then you can reset them with that. Like, like even after like let's say after like a uh, 4K, which gives you. Uh, Plus 40 frame advantage lift stun on like counter hit. You can go for a, a roll and mix up after that, or you can try and reset pressure with a uh, with roll and P plus K if they are able to stagger escape out and block. But generally, the two options we'll be using is going for the the launcher K or the reset throw. Um. Uh, the Roland mix-ups become even more potent. Can become even more potent at a wall. All right, before um, I think it was a patch in Dead or Alive Five Ultimate. What what happened is that this throw used to um, the Roland T used to um, wall slam. So what that would what it would do is it would wall slam, and then you wouldn't be able to get off a follow up. But now Roland T doesn't it doesn't wall slam anymore. So you, you basically get your opponent plus twenty one in front of a wall. So with this you can pretty much go for for a lot of various mid options. With the most uh, recommended one is her is her seven K. Yeah, there are there are there are different um, various options you can go, and of course you can always just simply go for it again. 
Because that's what I, I like about this throw though, is that it's, it's hard to tell like what you're going to do out of it. I mean, even if you suspect the opponent might be reading your throw, then you can just counter hit poke him with a roll and peek. If you think it's going to stay there, or for instance, off of like, say off of her re walled reset throw, you could end up going for a roll and peek plus K, and if you do it right away, the opponent won't be able to strike out of it fast enough and will be forced to have to try and hold it. However, if they do, if they for instance do try and hold, then you can just obviously simply throw them again. Uh, I will admit that most of the options I use out of here are, are mid kicks. Because she doesn't really have a, she doesn't really have a good, what I would consider a good mid punch option that a uh, wall slams. I think, unless someone can uh, correct me, the fastest one I think is just simply her uh, six P plus K, which is her critical burst, which is actually I like it. It's nice and fast at a uh, relatively fast at 19. Although compared to her like mid kick options, which are, which are cons which are a bit faster. Like I'll, I'll admit 6 6 6 6 k usually is better like if you're more in open space but if you're like right at the wall 7k I mean 35 well 35 damage plus wall damage for a 12 frame move if you if you end up wall slamming them then you can uh, juggle them right after uh, as for uh, wall juggles I usually do 2 ppp then um 3 PPP, although you can also do 6k for the same effect for around the same, well only one point less of damage, but it's a um, quicker, quicker recovery and it's a quicker poke, so whichever one you feel more comfortable with. I think another thing that some people do do after it is, uh, Oh no, off of a off of a lunch sometimes they might go for four PPP. Uh yes, another uh, wall splat in move is or would be your um You you can use Jakayo you can use Jakayo 6P and Jakayo 6P plus K, but of course those require you to to, to enter the stance. So, so the most common time you, you would end up using like a like a, a mid punch if you have the opponent back into a corner uh, would be if you do a move that initiates six p or six pp or six six k on or uh, well or 6k even though they will recover before. Um, but yeah, as for her rolling T, I'd say this is probably arguably her most potent option. Although the, the, the K option does does set up um fairly fairly large juggles if you like do it like during threshold. Although the move Unfortunately, the the rolling kick is th 38 frames, so so the general go-to option should be the throw. And once they start um, looking out for the throw, then you can start to implement um, other options. Because out of most stuns, you can generally um, be able to stagger stay fast enough and then block in the kick. It it will leave you unsafe. However, the kick is actually in an air state. Which means that um, you can't um, you can't throw punish it easily, or you have to be really on point with it because of the because of the air status. So a recommended would be to try and uh, strike punish it. I mean, strike punish if you end up um, if you end up blocking this. Okay, I can show you how much it is uh, uh, negative on block. So it's oh it's only um 
Oh, it's only on minus, minus 10 on block, so yeah, you can't... You can't... Basically can't throw punish it. I don't know, I was thinking in my head that it was like more negative about minus 17, but yeah. This is a fairly, uh, relatively safe launcher. Uh, I did, I, I might have ex explained it earlier, but I'll, I'll go over it also. On top of the different, uh, Jukaio, um, transitions, like, I'll show you, um, I'll show you each move that you can, um, I'll show you each move that you can get it off of. Like, alright, there's 6pp, 6 6k, uh, 3k, uh, 3p, and, uh, you can even do it from your, your pppp string. Oh, and, uh, for, for, also off of her cage cage string. Alright. Uh, the other uh, Jakao transitions I was uh, talking about would be her... Her three peeps. Would be off of her... They're in the form of cancels. Like, I don't know, I suspect I might have explained this uh, earlier, but I'll, I'll go over it again. Because this is actually, I find, is the trickiest thing to go over. Because, uh, you don't have the option to press, uh, P plus K. So, you have to just essentially learn the... Le you just essentially have to learn the timing of the charge cancel. There, like, there are, there are just four of them. I mean, the more common ones would be... Off of six, uh, six, six PPP. Like how how this works is you, like th for however many punches there are, you have to hold the last punch, and you have to cancel during that. Um, there's one off of four P, and technically there's one off of um three P also, but. In that case, I usually just go for the... There's also a P plus K option, which I find is more reliable. So I usually go for that one. And the last one is off of... um. The last one is off of 2P. Uh, the last uh, 2P does have um, four punches, so... Uh, I have trouble getting it right now. Shoot. Now uh, you kind of um, get the idea. Like for 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 that cancel, you're most likely going to be doing it off of um six P. Although a four P one can also come in handy because you can also. You can also um, access it off your, off of your uh, PP string, because it would be PP for PP then charge. Uh, yes, off of the roll, two options you can do is. Um, is uh, either uh, 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 well, I know her, um, her, her, I mean, off of the throw, her 6-6, six, six, her 6-6-K her six, six would be, uh, is guaranteed, but, um, Although there is, I, I have found that there is a window that the opponent can, there is a window that a window that the opponent can uh, hold during. But yeah, but for six six p, it does push back a bit, so you have to do it a bit in corners.
Huh? Although I'll just uh, I'll just go over um, her throw game a bit more um, formal here now. All right, she doesn't really have that many. She doesn't really have that many throws. She has her five frame neutral throw. Her her six frame um her six frame um forward throw. Uh, a ten frame um reset throw. And a ten, uh, or ten frame, just a position switch throw, which does become a powerful reset in corners. And her uh, half circle back twelve frame throw, which is used to uh, punish holds, along with, of course, the uh, aforementioned on rolling T. All right, generally for neutral throw, this is just simply your, your either your tick throw. Or to punish things on block that are either minus six or minus uh, seven on block. For minus eight or higher on block, you'll opt for your um, your your seven frame throw. Um, and but in um, open space in general, the throw which you'll be going for the most. The throw you'll be going for the most is her, uh, is her 4T. Because with this throw, it does grant her, um, plus 4. However, however, the opponent is technically left, um, the opponent is left in a back turn state, so in, um, in DOA, in order to to turn around and block it requires an extra five frames so if the opponent was to want to or to, if the opponent was to try and strike you from this uh position it'd be like they're at uh minus it would be like they're at minus nine because of that however the exception is if they're making use of their back turn moves like against someone like um ayane against someone like ayane she does have really powerful um back turn options so I mean, uh, it, it would be a little audacious for her to do so, but I have seen an Ayane end up doing um, her backflip move, her um, 7k. Uh, I can't really set the... Uh, so I can set the AI to kind of show. But... Uh, it's a little tricky to demonstrate with Ayane because it's her it's her back turn key. Ah uh, yeah, it won't won't work here. What, what the move I was talking about is is um uh, is this move. Her back which is a it's a eleven frame um mid kick. Like she could technically like if you try and do some um uh, if you tr if you try and do something like a bit slower after it, like off of her four, it, you might go for a three K, for instance, which can transition into Jakayo. Like this move, your three K is sixteen frames. I use this one because technically, if you go for a six K after, the opponent can avoid it by, um, like, if you're turned around. Generally, what I do to escape this kind of situation is press back back or 4-4. But if, if the opponent does do that, your 6k will end up um, whipping. I mean, you could also do um, 6pp too, but... But the, the general options you're going to be go going after a 4t are different um, p-strings or pokes. 6pp. I mean, depending on it, the uh, I mean, I, I'm assuming the opponent's going to be blocking after this. Some people try and mash out of it, but if they're blocking, then yes, then technically, they, if you go into a transition, they can uh, do something about it. But you can you can um, continually reset with it. 
But a, a devious thing, of course, you can... A devious thing you can do with it is... You can, if they're technically, keep doing it. So, I mean, that right there, because generally speaking, the opponent, because, I mean, it only gives you plus four, but it leaves the opponent right next to you, so they, I mean, aside from maybe trying to get away from a 6k, they can just simply, they can just simply turn around. Um, for 660 does uh, change positions. So and it it does decent damage at um 52 on um on normal hit on on high counter I think it does about 79 or 78 yeah 78 on um high counter but um generally for 660 it becomes most dangerous when you end up using it at a wall because right here it puts the opponent into a slump down status and they will be unable to they'll be unable to wake up kick you so from here you can. From here, the opponent's basically at your mercy, and you can uh, kind of uh, do whatever. What I do sometimes is you can go for a, a roll mix-up right after. If they try and tech to the side, you can use uh, your H plus K mid uh, tracking. I for or. Uh, yeah, the angle can be a little picky at times. The thing I do is if the if the opponent does try and mash out of it, you can wall slam them with rolling P plus K. And if the opponent usually they should be just standing there blocking, so you can usually try and even go for it again. Eventually they might try and crouch and just try and um mash out of it so you can get a little creative with pokes. I mean there are different options. If you really do suspect that they're gonna try and sidestep, you can get a counter hit launch with um you can end up getting a, a counter hit launch with uh Full crouch uh, 3P. I like it. But generally, here the options I tend to go for is you can either kind of whiff a quick poke, and you'll still be at you'll still be at a frame advantage. Like if you like were to uh, if you were to like um, uh, if you were to. If the opponent was, uh, if you were to just, um, if you wanted to like, try and keep the pressure, you can try and bait them to push buttons by just whipping something with quick recovery, like a jab or jab jab. But if the if the if the opponents are afraid that you might go for a, if you might go for another throw, then they will, they may end up trying pushing buttons. Then you can end up wall slamming or with you with wall slamming your opponent with either rolling. P plus K, or rolling P plus K like this, or rolling PP. An option, an option select after this. If you if you want to, if you want to take a the safe route like after this throw, you can just simply jab, then you'll still be at frame advantage on um, wake up. I mean, it's a bit riskier to go for. It's a bit riskier to go for uh, P plus K because uh, it's a bit riskier. It might or it might seem a bit riskier to go for uh, P plus K because it is a slower move. But if you do it right away, the opponent won't be able to jab out of it at the time, especially if they have a 10 frame jab or slower. All right. I mean, as as you can guess, her her. Uh, a large basis for her a large basis for her wall game I mean her, her wall game is is really strong it, I mean as you can guess her forward forward T is 
This is basically the, the basis for resetting the opponent alone. Oh, and option select is basically your go-to option in a mix-up situation. Well, it can be either your go-to option for it or against it. For here, it's, it, it also can be considered the option that covers the most of your opponent's um, options. I mean, from here, there technically isn't an option select, but if you... Because right here, you still have to... There isn't any, like, uh any sort of like guaranteed option or fault that you can really do you simply have to just uh well kind of feel out your opponent with but if you, like the safest option would be just simply to whiff something with quick recovery then you'll remain at um, frame advantage and it can throw the opponent off the most common option i go for is uh just roll in p, p plus k and uh i can get it Let's just go for a roll in P plus K until the opponent um, responds to it because it is a, I mean it's a it's this powerful wall slam move and it's a plus ten uh, guard break allowing you to continue pressure after that. Um, all right the the wall slam moves I usually c go for with Christy can include things like um, well on. I'll just set it to counter hit. You can use like KK, PKK, 7K. A lot of her mid kicks have a fall up that can wall slam. Like 6BK, 6KK. Um, Chikayo 6P is a good one. Jukaio uh, 6P plus K. And you can also wall slam with her critical burst too. Because um, a lot of her other um, mid punches usually require you to have to, to get to a certain hit within a string before it will um, before it will wall slam. Like you, I mean, for, for the attacks that wall slam like in one hit, like 7K, 3k, like these ones can, are tend to be good um, go-to moves. For for a high, you can use um, for a high you can use a P plus K. Although the thing about like six P plus K or P plus K, they are a little um, they are a little slower as opposed to like KK. Although with um, like KK or PKK, the opponent can technically hit, hold a, a follow up can hold a follow up hit. And when you do a wall wall slam, you can get um, decent damage off of doing like a two PP then a three PPP, or six um, K then three PPP. Like generally, this is for lightweights and um, middleweights. For um, for heavyweights, there uh, for heavyweights you won't be able to connect. Um, the, like either the 2 pp on them because generally against like a super heavy you may have to just go for the 3 ppp for instance uh, usually when i have the opponent at the wall i usually do just simply go i, I do usually simply go for the damage but there are options to there, there are options to, to um to kind of reset or uh, force tech the opponent at a wall. Ah, I went down here. So I mean, an option is to use her, um, is her uh, PPPP uh, 2K, even though you have to, you have to delay the case, like, or it will it will go through. You can attempt the second kick, although the opponent might um, try and wake up kick you during it. It is also possible to do this off of a uh, three PP uh, Jakayo transition.
Although, if you if you go for it, you do you do end up sacrificing a bit of um damage. Because another option is to simply um just let them uh, slump down after the full wall slam, like off of a full wall juggle. Uh. Yeah, it keeps turning. Oh, I have it on carried, I think. Uh, I guess that is a slight worry with um, using three PvP as an ender is that it does drop if the opponent is not free at the wall. So you can slump down, and you can hit them with two H plus K. So I mean, generally in Oki, when you knock the opponent down, two H plus K will generally be your um, your go your go to option. What I usually do sometimes on wake up is sometimes I might just simply go for a single. I might just go for a single 2H plus K, and um, if the opponent techs, if, if if the opponent techs up, you can just you can still block, or if they go for a wake up kick, you can still hold it. You can still hold it in time, and if they just lie on the ground, then you can do the second part of the string. Uh, but yes, if you do want the, uh, ah oh, shoot, if you do want a force tech option, PPP, uh, PPPP, uh, Jukaio, uh, 1K generally is your would be your option to end up waking them up. Although I I usually just take the I usually just take the wall damage. Alright, so when you are pressuring the opponent at the wall, your goal is to find a way to, to either set up basically one of your two reset throws that you want. Either 6-6-T or roll and T. Usually at a wall, you'll usually want to go for a 6-6-T, but if you do stun the opponent, you can, mix them, you can end up mixing them a bit with a roll and T. How's everyone doing so far? Yeah, I know this has been uh, quite long. Uh, I, I I do apologize for that. This is my uh, first st stream, and I am starting to get uh, get used to doing this. So I hope it has been informative in uh, some way. Um, all right, I'll I'll go over some some safe strings and pokes that you can um, do with uh, Christy. All right, we'll just start with her fundamental um, uh, P. With this, it's um, minus three on block and on. Um, it's minus minus one hit, so. You technically can, if the opponent's just standing there, you can frame trap him with your jab. I mean, Christy has a nine frame jab, which is the fastest in the game. So, yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with just a, which you can't go wrong with just poking with the jab. Um, other other safe options can include any of her um, any of, like the machine gun fists. Like any of these options are only a minus five on block, making them sit. Although a bit of a unique frame trap with Christy would be her uh, her nine uh, her nine key. 
This move, even though, I mean, it has 27 frames of recovery and it looks unsafe, but it's actually just... It's actually just a zero on block. So every time the opponent blocks this, you can just, uh... You can, basically, you, you can end up strike, continuing the attack, like, right away, pretty much. There's a, lo a lot of people may think it's their turn. Uh, a lot of people may think it's their turn to attack. Then you'll end up counter hitting with uh, jabs. So it is a, a good frame trap. I mean, it causes a thirty, a plus thirty one nosebleed stun on normal hit. So it's, it's also good for starting the stun game too. So if for end up um, kind of like go to safe pokes, um, with Crystal, I'll kind of show the ones that I tend to the the ones I tend to like make use of. Like I tend to like free canceling a lot with Christy because her free canceling ability is really good. I mean, couple that with her. Um, with their string delays, I mean, it, you, you can you can you can kind of uh, mind fuck an opponent a lot with her. But just simply, as I mean, generally, Christy tends to be most unsafe when she finishes a string. Although technically, if the opponent calls you out on a free cancel, you, you will like on uh, six PP, you will be unsafe. But I do I do tend to go for 6pp a fair bit or just simply do 6p or all 3ps I mean like it's a, it's a good go-to string for a, a low poke I tend to just go for her 2h plus k technically 2h plus k and yes and like uh, Osmic also pointed out 9p is also good for um, for for baiting reactions from your opponent I mean, um, it's not very common that someone gets a kind of a freely used um, a quick high poke, which can be which ends up being zero on zero on block. If you if you couple that with having a nine frame jab and a eleven frame six P, you can you can definitely really kind of um, mess mess up an opponent a bit. And you can do if the opponent is really locked. Up, Although for me, I tend to focus a lot around her kind of, um, her different, um, strings. Uh, her 2P is a, a decent poke, even though I don't really necessarily like how the follow-up is a high. But having extra follow-ups can definitely kind of help you from punishment, because generally you can get away with just doing a 2PP a lot of times. Although if the opponent catches on, they can go under the second hit. Uh, now for frame trapping with Christy, usually the a good way to kind of like go go about it is just is just simply kind of just a uh, poke with her. Because like if you end up if you end up finishing a lot of um, strings, you will be um, unsafe on block. Although an interesting attack she has, which is actually a lot more safe, uh, uh, a lot more safer than it looks, is her quarter circle back P, her two one four P. Like it's minus seven on block, but it does grant you a really uh, it does grant you a really nice uh, sit down stun on. This grants you a really nice sit down stun even on normal hit. From here, you can get guaranteed follow ups. The usual go to follow up I do here is 4k. But if you really want, just want the full damage, you can just um, go for. You can just go for. Uh, you can just go for the 8k. 
Like if you just want the some if you just want the guaranteed uh damage. Like for here, you get up to plus 25, although the opponent can't you have to be careful, the opponent can stagger escape you. And get it down to plus 17. However, at plus 17, your 4k. Uh, your 4k will still be unguaranteed, so. And so, I mean, with 4k. That's cool. Ah, uh, his opponent's still blocking. Oh, I said it to that. With 4k, you, you can set up some really dangerous situations. I usually go for a launch after this. So after 214 uh, P plus K, I generally go for three general options. P plus K gives you a guaranteed um, faint stun. So what you do is 214 P, then uh, P plus K. See, this will give you a guaranteed 4k launch, or a launch juggle. And you can do a small juggle afterwards. The next option I go for is simply go for another K, uh, another 4k. Because 4k is called a threshold launcher. What that means is that it launches... Uh, what that means is that it lo launches if you I exceed the threshold. Like, it, basically if you do it like twice in a row. Basically like this. One, two. So during stun, if you hit the opponent with a 4k uh, lift stun, doing 4k again is an option as a launcher and I find that it's a more... At relatively lower critical levels, it's um... It could be a more potent launcher than even going for 8k. Although 8k is still better if you were to say to go um... Post critical burst, for instance. Uh, but continue with uh, 214 uh, P plus K. Um, the, the options I said is um, after 4K is a P plus K, two 4Ks, or the most powerful one is simply go for another uh, P plus K, and this will give you a guaranteed critical burst setup. Although, this one tends to work best if the opponent, say, um, were to whiff a hold. Because technically you can, uh, you can stagger escape out of this one because um, 214p is 32 frames. And you can, um, you could stagger the stun down to plus 30, which will not allow it. However, this move is... This move, like I showed again, is only minus seven on blocks, so technically there isn't much risk to throwing it out during um, uh, threshold because it's at minus seven, the only thing the opponent can do is, uh, well, the only way they can punish you is go try and go for the guaranteed neutral throw attempt, but those are breakable. But yeah, I mean, as for uh, two one four uh, P plus K, this as for two one four P. P plus K, this option works best as kind of a, like a whiff punisher. So what is if the opponent comes at you with an attack in them with this because it steps back a bit, it even uh, has some crouching frames, and then when they come at you, you end up hitting them with uh, the sit down stun. Another frame trap that I also do make um, use of against a Garden opponent is uh, Jukaio 6P plus K. It's only minus 5 on block, so you're completely safe from uh, punishment, and there's also good pushback. From Jukaio, if the opponent suspects you'll go for 6P plus K to try and frame trap, you can also go for uh, just Jukaio 2 plus K. It's just minus 15 on block, but they have to respect the 
the, the potential follow-ups that you can do. Um... And also another move you can use also as a frame trap is there a Jakai, just simply a Jakai OP due to the j numerous uh, follow-ups. You can also technically frame trap a bit with um, Jakai OPK as long as you um, as, as long as you end up delaying the last hit which can definitely uh, throw people off. Okay. Everyone doing all right so far? Uh, I'll go over I'll just go over a little bit with regards to her um lower low punch hold. Ah, uh, thank you for that, Austin. Also, uh, he says uh, 6k Jack P is a... 6k Jack P is a frame trap. Oh uh, yeah, so I remember that... Uh, Chikayo P is generally would be like your... Uh, your go-to option with regards to... Uh, would be your go-to option from Chikayo. Alright, I'm just going to go over just a little bit with regards to her, um, well, basically it's her only hold that I would say is, um, is, is, uh, kind of can be a threat in its own, uh, can be a threat in its own right, is her low punch hold. Alright, off of, um, off of this hold it allows you to get off, um, Juggles that can do over 60 damage. There is generally the most damage you can the most damage you can get on um, on on a normal hit low punch hold would be 65 damage. Although that juggle only really works on um, lightweights, like it's a it's a little iffy on middleweights and won't work on uh, super heavies. But it, it will work, it, it works best on uh, lightweight, so it does 65 damage, but I usually tend to go for, um, nine, I usually go for, the combo I go for would be 9k, um, 7, 7p, then p, k, k, k for, uh, for 64 damage. Although if you suspect it, the uh, last hit may not connect, you can opt for you can opt for PKK 2K, which only does two less damage, and it can't wall slam, but it does keep the opponent a bit closer by. If you do so desire, you can also get the ground splash for a force tech option right after. And with that, with the ground splash, it's a uh, what it generally means is that uh, if the opponent techs up, then they'll avoid your follow up, but you'll be at frame advantage. Or if they 
fly on the ground, then you will be able to tech him up. Although the 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 dummy does tend to do a delayed wake up, so they just simply get up right away. But yeah, for your most the most damage you can get is about um 65, which is still pretty good on normal hit with uh with the 9k, 7p, kk, jakayo, pp. For the force tech, you'll end up doing um, 9k, 7p, then pp, 2k, p. In corners, in corners you'll have to modify the, the juggle slightly. Instead of ending with PKKK or KK Jakayo uh, PP, you'll end up doing. Uh, you can either do 6K or 7P, then do 3 PPP. PP. 6K connects at lower heights, so if you think the 7P may not connect properly, then you can go for 6K instead. The general, the main reason why you can't do PKKK is that will end up um, wall slamming prematurely. So three PPP will be your best option. Yeah, the only slight issues with three PP is it can um. It can get a little disoriented easily if it if Christie's on the angle, but it still does a uh, decent damage. All right, where her low punch hole becomes the most potent would be under a ceiling. Off here, you'll get a free two one four uh, P. Alright, do be careful, it does cause a floor break, which is generally annoying to get, but it, it does happen. But the generally the strongest option you can get off this is just simply to get a free power blow. Which is inputted with Christy by one P plus K or down back P plus K. And uh, it says here, Osmic also says you'll get a guarantee. You can get a guaranteed uh, power launcher off it also. Although I haven't practiced the power launcher under a ceiling yet. Right, if this doesn't only apply to this though, but any ceiling throw or ceiling hold that um, knocks the opponent into uh, the ceiling, as long as you're facing forward, the power blow will be guaranteed. This is because you are at over plus 70, so as much air you're at plus 79, a power, and a power blow can take between 40 to 60 frames to, to charge up. But if you don't want to use a power blow, 214P then 4K are guaranteed. Six. Uh, 8K is also guaranteed. All right. The generally the most damage you'll get off it is doing um. Uh, is doing the PKK Jakayo PKP juggle. Uh, Alright, a single or a similar juggle you can do is. Uh,
I mean, you always have option to your um, your your 6P, but. A similar juggle you can do, which does pretty much the same damage, it only does one point less, is um, after launch, you go for, you do 2PP, two, uh, two then just PKK. Although, any of the, la the last two kicks can wall slam. Because, um... Uh, because doing the other juggle... You and the other juggle does kind of knock the opponent around, so you may not necessarily know where they where end up. Where with this one, it's a lot more consistent. Like, you know they're going to be in front of you, and you can back them into a corner. You can also just end with 2k if you want to do a... It only does 2 less damage, but it doesn't necessarily knock them away as far. But generally, what I if I don't want to necessarily go for the guaranteed damage, just do 4k, you got yourself a critical burst setup. You can even get more devious and use your... You can even enforce a rolling mix-up. So the setups you can do can be quite um, potent. Well, the thing is that, I mean, th in this case though, although you won't be able, you can use the similar options as before, but p you won't be able to use P plus K though. Instead, you can just go for any other high launcher. Because the, remember, these two hits are guaranteed, so you don't have to worry. You could still do another 4k. Uh, so you can go for you can go for a 4k. You can go for the critical burst. Or you can go just go for just go for a high. See for high launchers, you've got your 9k. Uh, shoot, that's a mid point. You got your 3-3p. And there's one last one, although I don't use it as much for H plus K. So the launchers again is is a nine K. Three three P. And 4H was good. Of course, the most damage you can do is going for the critical burst. And then, you're in a, most walled ceiling stages tend to have a... Most, most ceiling stages tend to have... Have, are tend to be pretty small and tend to have easily accessed walls. So with your combo, you can generally carry them to the wall.
but but remember if you have it available you can go for your power blow or if you so please you get a guaranteed um, you get a guaranteed power launcher combo even though I don't use I don't make use of power launchers that much All right, I'll go over. Um, I'll go over Christie's uh, launchers now. Uh, let me just send Diana out of the room. Oh, wow. All right, Christie does have quite, quite a bit of launchers. Um, for normal hit launchers, basically ones that launch just on a standard normal hit status. You have a 9k, Jakayo P plus K, Roland K, and uh, I think the other ones all require a counter hit or to be threshold. So for normal hits, just 9k. Kyle P plus K and roll and K. The rest will end up requiring a counter hit. So for for uh, counter hit launchers, you have um, 8K, which is a it's actually a fairly potent launcher. It does 28 damage on normal hit, 35 on counter hit, and it's only um, 16 frames, which is a uh, well, it's the same speed as our 9K. So the two can be like a, a mix up, a launch mix up with each other. Your fastest, uh, la your fastest standard counter hit launcher, full couch three P. This one, its range, its range is, its range is short, at only one point, but its range is short, but it does, it, it does launch and it does high crush. But yes, this is your. This is her mid punch launcher from uh, her mid her mid punch launcher from neutral. Uh, so 8k full couch 3p for uh, another one would be um, uh, 4h plus k, which leaves her back turn. For this, you're generally gonna have to follow up with um, with back turn t plus k, which is also a counter hit launcher. So when you're back turned, such as if you enter it from either 4P, I mean the most common ways is 4P or PP 4P. If you're at a launch, you can either do H plus K or P plus K. I find most people tend to like to hold mid punch, so I tend to go for the I tend to go for the mid kick option. Another benefit also is that uh, back turn H plus K is an, is unholdable. Let's see if I can uh, show an example. So what that means is it can't be held. Although, all right, let me check. But the opponent will be at um the opponent will be at frame frame advantage. Uh, let me just see if I could kind of show it to see the frame advantage. Uh, the opponent holds. I had opponents holding too early. I uh, try the critical hold. All 
right? So you'll be at minus 18 if the opponent holds, meaning that they do get a free... Um, you, they, they will get a free throw attempt on you. So it doesn't only apply to this, but for other moves such as something like Genfu's H plus K, if you do perform a mid-kick hold on it, then what you do is that instead of holding it, you'll sidestep it, but you can still get a free throw attempt. So yeah, so it's technically not safe from holds, but it's just that the opponent will have to pun punish it differently. Alright, just continue with the... Uh... Oh, this makes it even. Alright, so just uh, continuing with the... Uh... Just continue with uh, all the different launchers he has. So for counter hit launchers, you've got AK. Uh, let me just turn off the the hold. So you have 8K, uh, full crouch 3P, 4 H plus K, Takayo, uh, Takayo P is a counter hit launcher. But you may notice that if a counter hit launcher hit connects on normal hit, you'll get a nice uh, lift stun. Because that's generally what you, get, you find most common. So you'll get a lift stun that generally will give you like over plus 30 frame advantage. So connecting it on normal hit's obviously not that bad. I mean, lift stuns are some of the best stuns in the game, or the best, are the best stuns in the game that are that the opponent has the capability of holding out of. Um, but also. On top, on top of her um, like counter hit launchers, I mean, technically she also has other ones like a one one p uh, one pk. Uh, she also has launchers that are considered threshold launchers. They're basically launchers that uh, launchers that connect if you kind of exceed the threshold. The most the most common one I use will be her like her 4K. Like what that means is you'll see a little thing on the move details that says critical damage. If you end up exceeding that number, the opponent will just fall over. But if you do that with a, a if you do that with what's called a threshold launcher, you'll launch them instead. So it turns into a, the attack goes from a, a stun to a, a potent launcher. So you can do that with 4K, 3P, uh, H plus uh, K. For H plus K, if you want to launch with it, I mean, if you if you haven't gotten, if you just want to simply do it right away, what you do is you press H plus K, press the block button, then press it again. Then it will end up uh, launching. But to end up getting a to end up getting a launch height that you may want, you have to do H plus K K. So what you do, could do is H plus K. Uh, okay. Then you press uh, H plus K, K. So one, block, then again. And from there you can get off, uh, you can get off a small juggle. Uh... Uh, Christy actually has a pretty sneaky threshold launcher. She can launch an opponent off of her 2P. So I mean, there's, there's one thing that Christy's um, like stun game that can actually make her... That can actually make her really dangerous. Is that when you, when you stun an opponent, for instance, if you get them to like um, critical level 3, which is the red stun, then technically you can launch them from four launch heights. 
And you can do a mid kick. You can do a high. You can do a mid punch. And you can launch off of lows also. Although technically they're not full, they're not fully classified as like a low launcher because it's actually a, a, a two hit string, meaning the opponent can technically hold the last hit, but it's generally difficult to do if you're mixing up really well. So, I mean, if you want kind of a go-to low launcher, one PK tends to serve that purpose well. If you're, although if you're close to threshold, then you can do 2P, or 2PP. I mean, it's not very often that people expect to get launched off of a low. Out of her launchers, I find her, uh, the mid punch one to be only kind of okay-ish compared to others with her her 8k generally being the best the best one from Nuso. So of course for for post critical burst I recommend um roll and K because that does set up the strongest juggles. And, uh, although sometimes this move can actually, it happens sometimes, the move can actually have a bit of a slightly wonky hitbox, and it might sometimes uh, miss the opponent. So that's why sometimes when you're practicing it, it might be a little unreliable. Like it, it's working fine here, but some, a lot of times it might drop on you, and that can obviously be catastrophic within a match. Um, if you're worried about that happening, what you can do is use, is just use a uh, 8k instead and just go for, you know, it's, it's a less damaging juggle but it's uh, more reliable. Mm, the less hit and drop is it. Yeah, there's just, you can just go for a, a simple juggle with um, 2PP, then either PKKK or PKK2K. Uh, so for, for, for launchers, the general go-to one I would use is 8K for counter hit. Um, Roland K as your like normal normal hit launcher, even though with Christy it's not really that necessary to do normal hit launching because her um her her reset capability is really good with her uh with her 4T. Uh you can also use a uh, 9K as a as like a really good um low crush. What it is is it's a two in one where the first hit is a high and the second hit is a mid kick. So you can use it to like to crush wake up kicks. Like 9kk is really good against low wake up kicks. Okay, um, when it's stunned, your your threshold launchers you're going to go for is either 4k, uh, I just turn that phone off, your threshold launchers are either going to be a 4k or 3p, so those are usually the two best ones, but of course you can always sneak in uh, 1pk. 1pk also serves as a really good high crush if you uh, think your opponent's to come at you with a high. An example being like Ayane 66kk4, you can 1pk under. Uh, Alright, I'll go over... 
a little bit with regards to Oki, but just uh, generally speaking, after uh, if you, if you want to go for like a if if you want to go for like some sort of like a ground setup, then you usually would end up finishing the opponent or juggle off with PP to uh, PP to KP. Because then you get the splash bound, which you can uh, use uh, 2 H plus KP, which is essentially your uh, that's your go to that's your gr go to ground hidden move. Because you can kind of hit, you can kind of check your opponent with a uh, 2 H plus K. It is just a it is just simply a, a ground hidden low. But if they press a button, they'll be teched up. It's just a, normally a ground hit, but but then you can delay the second hit. Another move you can also use to hit an opponent. The other moves you can use to hit the opponent on the ground would be like your uh, uh, her run in 2K or uh, let me try or you can use Chikayo 2K. Generally, if you text someone up on wake up, usually what I would recommend is probably either a mix up with a 6pp or or go for 4t. So generally, you can get a little cr creative with it. Uh, like, like I showed again, like at the, at the wall, you can use a PPP uh, Jakayo to one uh, K, and that will tech him up if you, if you so desire to go for if you so desire to go for a force tech at the wall. Then you, you can there after you wake them up you can pressure with the throw if they're pushing buttons. You can counter hit them with like H plus K, 6P, or you can launch them with that. Because generally it can be a bit hard to react to a throw on, on wake up. Because with 4P you can you can use quick pokes to try and uh, reset your opponent. Uh but for Uh, for her Oki, it is mostly based around checking them with your opponent with 2 H S K P. Uh, does anyone does anyone have any uh, questions right now? I'll go over a bit of a question period right now. I I, I thank you for your uh, I thank you for your patience. I noticed it was uh, quite long, but this is my. Uh, this, this was my uh, first stream, so I know yeah, I have to get used to this a bit more, but uh, thank you so much for uh, for uh, watching. So I'll answer some uh, questions right now. Oh, that's a lot of text to go through. I don't mind me, I'm just reading the comments right now. I know I've been talking for quite a while. <laughs> Again, I thank you for the 
patience, but I know I was trying to get this to flow as uh, best as I could. But it's yeah, it's a it's quite a quite a lot to cover, and I uh, I didn't want this necessarily to be too complex, but I also want it to be um, fairly uh, fairly comprehensive. Uh, all right, well, all right, let me just read here. So it says, who is the worst character you can go against with Christy? Um, does that mean um, who gives her the most um, trouble? Uh, the characters I find that um, give Christy the most trouble would be, uh, I find that uh, Lei Fang and Ayani tend to give uh, Christy the most the most trouble. Lei Fang's um, defensive options are really good at dealing with Christy in close because Christy is very uh, Christy is very um, punch heavy, and uh, Lei Fang has a Sabaki stance, her four P plus K, which can uh, parry punches. Like with Christy, you're most commonly going to be using 6Ps and uh, PPs. Oh, yeah. So with Lei Fang, uh, you need to be careful when you use punches against her. You need to keep her in check with throws. But the thing is that Chris, unless you're going for like a, a walled 6-6T, Christy doesn't really have threatening throws to discourage holds or parries. However, Lei Fang, on the other hand, Lei Fang does hate characters that have really good high mid low mix ups. And Christy does have a. Uh, Christy does have good high, high mid low mix ups. Uh, as for, uh, as for uh, Ayani, the, the challenge with Ayani is that Ayani will. Her zoning, her zoning capability is superior, but also because her um, her tracking capability is really good at at dealing with uh, Christie's uh, Jakayo stance. So anytime you like go, anytime you do Jakayo neutral, which I obviously don't really recommend in close, but particularly against Ayani, she has a move called 4P, which will just um, which can slap you out of the stance. I can even uh, show you it right. I can even show you it right here. All right, see, Jakayo can avoid a linear move, but four P will just four P will just ruin your day. I mean, it, this just will it could it basically will just I will just stuff her stances. Uh. For Ayani, generally what you want to do is you want to end up fighting her in close. Because at range, Ayani tends to win that battle. But what you want to do is you don't really want to give the Ayani player uh, room to breathe. Basically, you want to stay up close and uh, pressure her so she'll have to deal with your 9 frame jab and your 11 frame uh, 2P. However, uh, Ayani does possess a 12 frame, uh, a 12 frame 2P which can uh, obviously which can obviously will beat out your own 2P and will go under your jab. When that happens, when that happens, of course, what you what you do is you simply this is where your that's where your your low punch hold can come into play. Because the, her Christie's low punch hold's primary purpose is to compensate for the fact that her low game is a little weak. So players may try to 2P her a lot. So you can you can um Discourage two P's by just by with their dangerous uh, low punch hold. Helena also can be a little. Helena can also be a little tricky against Christy because of having to deal with their uh, Bokoho duck out of her Bokoho stance, which goes under all mitts. However, what you can do, for instance, in say like round one fight, so when both uh, characters are close. What what you can do is use your is use your six P string to try and keep her in check, because in order to avoid 
in order to avoid her in order for Helena to avoid the entire stream she'll have to she'll have to bulk a whole duck under each one so you can simply free cancel manipulate it because if she tries to do anything out of Bokoho other than duck, she'll get hit by 6 PP. Uh, the Helena Christie matchup, I'd say, is very slightly in Christie's favor, but it's it's not enough to be a 6-4, so it might be a 5.5, 4.5 at worst for for uh, for Christy, but it's still a fairly even matchup. The main thing is just learning how to deal with a Bokoho. Like against Helena, you need to be really careful when using highs against her. So against Helena, you have to use a lot of mids and lows. I mean, even then, uh, I mean, her Bokoho duck can go under like Christy's 7k, for instance. Like you'll have to try and use... Um, well, you could two pier. You'll have to try and use um, true true mids. Although um, uh, I mean, Christy might be a little limited when it comes to like true mids or like ground hidden mids and stuff like the last set of H plus K or APP. But yeah, for for dealing with Bokoho Duck, you, trying to manipulate with um with six P is generally a good option or six PP. All right, just uh, reading some more comments here. Let's see. Uh, all right, let me just read another one. If you are down and forced back up, does holding guard work? Uh, so, so I'm guessing what you mean is if someone force texts you. Uh. Let me see if I can. Uh, let me see if I can show an example. Um, if you're knocked, if you're knocked down, and um, if you're knocked down, and someone for forces you back up um, what you, you, yeah you can basically guard any follow-up however technically what there can be is a small window where the opponent might be able to perform what's called an uh, unholdable which means is a move that cannot be held for a certain amount of frames I mean if you get forced up or off of a wake-up situation but yes you can definitely unblock you can generally gently block any um, blockable attacks if you are simply holding block right as you get knocked down, then you'll well you'll tech up to whatever direction you're holding, or if you don't press a direction, you'll tech up right on you'll tech up right on the spot. Like for me, I tend to tech roll, I tend to tech roll a lot because lying on the ground is not really a good habit. Like if you lie down, you're just asking for the opponent to hit you, but if the opponent is whipping stuff above your body, then yeah, feel free to lie down and just give him a wake-up kick. Uh, but yeah, if, if you're forced back up, I usually just recommend guarding and pay attention to when the opponent tries to throw you, because a lot of people do try to throw you after uh, being teched up. Alright, let's look at some more questions. Uh, does anyone else have any uh, other questions? <laughs> Against Genfu? Well, if you want to know in a direction to tech, generally the the recommended option is to tech backwards. It's just simply a, it's just simply a tech back, because that tends to give you the most space as compared to a tech into the side. If you tech back, you can also avoid um, downed attacks.
But if, if there isn't any other uh, questions, I'll, I'll finish off with a, just a bit of a, like a s relative summary of, um, of kind of Christie. Alright, I'll, ju I'll just uh, finish off with a quick summary. Christie's primary playstyle is as Rushdown, where she does really well in a CQC, uh, Close Quarters Combat, and her defense is mostly based around um, evasion. I mean, she is really fast with a, a, a 9 frame jab, an 11 frame mid punch, and a 14 frame uh, low punch, coupled with having a 12, 12 frame, 13 frame, and 14 frame uh, mid kicks. Her, her primary weaknesses revolve around her um, her relatively uh, low throw damage and her um, relatively low hold damage, meaning that she can't really punish other oppo opponents that hard on block, for instance. I mean, she could still punish fairly hard on um, if you whip something and hit them with a uh, and hit them with say two one uh, two one four p, for instance. But on block, if yeah, she I and mean, you can use slightly riskier moves against her. Uh, her guard break game is her guard break game is very strong with numerous guard breaks that can go anywhere from plus that can go anywhere from like a that can go anywhere from like plus two. That can go anywhere from plus 2 up to uh, plus 15. Her power blow even gives her a plus 14. With the plus 14 and plus 15 guard breaks, you can get a, a guaranteed 6p. Or you can get a guaranteed a 6p for a strong counter hit stun. Uh, Christie's string manipulation game is outstanding and is really, really intimidating. Majority of her strings are delayable and can branch off on all hit levels and can contain as many as 5 hits. Her low gain isn't really that strong with majority of her lows being negative on normal hit. However, a lot of them have are either parts of strings or have follow-ups. Her lows that tend to her lows that tend to be uh her lows that tend to be uh positive on like normal hit tend to be within strings if you like the usual go-to one would be like 4 pk or 2p plus or 2h plus k p although of course if the opponent's paying attention they can easily hold the second hit so you do have to be careful with them and if, and one one p plus k is is probably one of her overall useful lows along with 2H plus K and Jakaio 1K. Christie's crush game is uh, is quite strong with a, a nice repertoire of, of uh, both low crushes and uh, high crushes, including her Jakaio that can high crush and her um, roll that can both high crush and mid crush. Your go to. Um, uh, your go-to high crushes will be 1pk, then 2p plus kp, although you can also use something like a full crouch 3p. For uh, low crushes, I recommend 7k and 9kk. But for the, for, for these moves though, be careful, don't just simply chuck them out because all of them are um, unsafe on block. Uh, Christy can be very devastating, very devastating with her when her opponent has the back to a wall. I mean, as you s saw earlier, her her 66T is her 66T is really a is her a wall 66T is a powerful um, wall throw. I mean, generally a, a good game plan with Christie is to focus around trying to find a way to blast like let's say the, to to blast the opponent to a corner and leave them there. Like moves like Takayo Uh, Jakayo 6p plus k knocks the opponent back far. If you act, if you hit an opponent in a juggle or a juggle that is uh, high enough, 
You can also hit them with, uh... You can also hit them with, uh, three PP charge and knock them back. If I could show you here. Requires a pretty big uh, stun. Oh, I don't have stagger escape on do I? done off of any attack where off of which ends in the charge punch uh, I'm trying to show an example You can use any of the charge punches. I don't use it as much. I tend to opt for this, but the but this tends to be a good option if you want to knock knock the opponent back. All right, I'll just uh, con continue on here. Um, her Okazemi game I do find is uh, decent with 2H plus KP being the go too low. If the opponent's on a bit of an angle, you can use 1P to hit him on the ground. You can use that as like a, as a ground hit. If the opponent does tech, yes, the the move will will whiff. But if they don't, it'll be a ground hit, and if they push a button, they'll be uh, teched up. Um, her defense is primarily based around two things: either trying to either trying to interrupt the opponent with P uh, P six P or P or six P strings or trying to use various crushes to go under, such as 2 HSK, 1P, 2P, Full Crouch, 3P, to end up going under um, high. Um, Christy is fortunate that she has a powerful command sidestep that can high crush, which can allow you to even option select certain situations, such as, say, uh, Momoji's, um, her double jump called Tengu Stance. There are three options out of it, a throw, a mid punch, and a high kick, well along with a, a charged power blow, but for the three main options, you can uh, you can uh, go under the throw and the high, and you can sidestep the punch op option if uh, the Momoji player goes for her Tengu double jump uh, mix-ups. You can Jakayo to, uh, to avoid the whole thing. Like it's similar to like Bayman's tank roll. Okay, so it avo it avoids um, linear, non-tracking moves and all high and pretty much, high, and all pretty much all high. Um, and of course, if we're on approach, even though it is risky, but if you can get a read, the opponent's going to use either a high or a, a, a well, what's called a non-true mid or a horizontal mid. You can try and go under it with the roll. But yeah. But at a distance, 
one thing that I can recommend practicing is the the Jikaio, Jikaio back dashes. Like, it, like doing this can make it a little tricky for the opponent to approach to approach you because they have to take into account your um, various options from doing this. Although you don't necessarily have to, to spam it, but it can throw an opponent off if you uh, make good use of it because it does make it considerably hard for uh, Christy to hit. Uh, as for a attack range, Christy's attack range is quite decent. I mean, she can attack comfortably from close range, where she's probably most comfortable. From mid range, you could try to counter hit someone with 6 PP or with 4K. Or, or you can even try and get in with a H plus K or whiff punish with 214 if someone runs at you. So she can fight fine from mid range. Like, and what you do is you try fish for like a counter hit. Um, at long at long range, you you don't really necessarily have options. Like her furthest reaching moves would be something like six uh, six six k, but it's not really a poke you can just chuck out. You could just use it against someone that maybe tries to backdash. Like if you suspect someone's to try and backdash you. Then you can hit him with a 6-6k, however it is unsafe on block at minus 10 and um, leaves you open to a back throw. But for range, I, well when, during approach you can you can kind of hover around like mid, mid range which is fine. Or if you can, I tend to spend as much time as possible in close range and I work her, I work her different string manipulations and uh, reset throws. Because I find that uh, it's good, I mean, unless the opponent has really strong defense, a lot of people can struggle against a, a Christy with a good pressure. Mm, with Christy, I don't really recommend trying to do maybe like a... I don't recommend necessarily trying to do a keep out game with her, but... Because her tools are mainly designed for mid-range poking or, um, or close range rushdown. Um, one of the probably most potent things about Christy, I'd say overall, would be her, would be her stun game. I mean, one of the first things you'll learn about with Christy is that she's one of the few characters who can launch you from all four. Like I, I like I mentioned earlier, she can launch from all four hit levels. See, she's got high launchers. got mid launchers I mean there's a mid punch I mean mid kick it's got threshold launchers and of course she has launchers off of lows I mean 2pp can throw people off but and of course there's also a 1pk got launchers out of stance So this is when Jakayo becomes great as a mix-up tool, is if the initial hit stun, because then the opponent has to anticipate what you're the opponent has to anticipate what you're gonna do. I mean to top it off, you also have the option to to do a Jakayo backdash, which you can use as a bit of a a bait. But yeah, it also she also does have some potent uh, lift stuns. The well, the the most common lift stun would be uh, 4K, with the second most common being um, three, their 3P. Because during the stun game, if you don't want to necessarily launch right away, then 3P can be your go-to mid punch. For highs. 
You can go for a uh, 9P. You can get a faint stun off of a uh, P plus K, which can give you a guaranteed um, 4K, which will either launch or give you a potential critical burst setup. Um, and also, yeah, any of her um, any any of her launchers also will give uh. Or majority of her counter hit launchers will give uh, lift stuns. So you remember that if you get the opponent uh, stunned, that's usually a good time to attempt a Jukaio mix up. And of course, you can go for a, a roll mix up if you get the opponent stunned enough. They need to do like a 50 50 between the launcher or the throw or you can just simply try and re reset them if they if they recover and block and just try and keep pressure up again although I usually recommend either the, the launcher or the throw a good a good rule of a good rule of thumb when I'm using a good rule of thumb when going to um, applying offense with Christy is to make use of free cancels and also making use of um, frame traps. Because once you get the opponent uh, locked up, you can start to implement her 4T in open space and her her 66T at wall. Her 66T at walls. I mean, her, her her throw game is not necessarily the strongest, but 4T and walled 66T are really good throws along with rolling T. As for holds, I mean, as as for holds, uh, yeah, her um her hold damage isn't necessarily the her hold damage is not necessarily the best, but but it's once you get that uh, that low punch hold though is always something for the opponent to have to to worry about. Uh, another thing also to practice with Christy along with um, different uh, her stances is you can also practice what's called um, you, you can also practice what's called a uh, Korean green back dash which is just simply quarter circle back uh, continuously like uh, Christie's is pretty uh, decent and it allows you to back stash things uh, quickly and also from before also, be careful if you're jacking against a, an opponent's uh, block, like 6P P Jakayo, they can uh, quick poke you with a 6P or 6K or something. So you will have to be careful with that on block if the opponent does that. But if they aren't, six, if they aren't counter hitting you, then you can feel free to go for mix ups. Uh, as for. Another thing also is nice with Christy is her um, her tracking capability is good with strong tracking moves like H plus K, uh, 3P. Simply using uh, strings like 6PP will also uh, re retrack. But to stop tracking, H plus K is usually the go-to move or using her PP and 6 PP strings can usually stop tracking along with uh, 1P. She does have other uh, tracking moves along with these but those are the usual um, main ones. Even uh, P plus K can track. Um, as for safety with Christy, it's, it's generally not too much of a concern as long as you're you're free canceling regularly and not finishing strings that are unsafe. Like, their general rule of thumb is just their machine gun fists tend to be the, the moves that are safe on block.
Um, Alright, is there any other uh, questions? I know I dumped off uh, a lot of information here and I might even be uh, forgetting some things, but I just want to give you a, a decent uh, overview for like I'll say, a big weakness though, well I mean a big thing with kind of fighting Chrissy though is you do have to be good at dealing with her strings. Meaning you have to know how to hold different parts of her strings. Like know when it, like for instance, PP, 2P, P goes high, high, low, then mid punch. Or PP, 2K, P goes high, high, low. Then. So by the fourth hit you'll know what to hold. So you have to pay attention to those things when I'm um, fighting Christy. Because um, the thing about Christy is her, her throws are not necessarily the most powerful, so you can get away with holding against her more often than other characters. Uh, Alright, if there isn't any more um, questions, I'll probably uh, finish off here. And uh, thank you guys for... Um, tuning in this evening and for uh, <laughs> for uh, putting up with my uh, fumbling here but uh, th thank you for uh, thank you for tuning in and I hope that you this has given you a bit more insight into the character and has helped you to and has, has kind of helped you if you're like thinking of taking her up or just getting like a better idea of kind of how she uh, operates all right thank you